Oh, hey. I just happen to be sitting here with the, the camera thinking about the footage that we got in some of the last videos. And my gosh, I'm so disappointed with log footage. I thought I had it figured out. I thought I understood how to use it. I was wrong. Yes. <clears throat> Sorry for my antics. So I've been making videos for a long time. I feel like I've made a lot of progress with um, what I'm able to do. I mean, if I were to go back to my original videos, which are still online, by the way, if you go to my... I, I don't know which channel you're watching this on, but my original channel still has my very Hang first upload. Go and, and uh, well, yeah, we, we've we've come a long way. And like I said, I thought I had this all figured out. I thought, you know, the the log thing, like everybody says, you got to shoot in log. You got to do that. It's it's then you get the best image. So I try it. And, you know, like I said, in, in the past, it's worked great. But this last one that I put together, it's like the thing was falling apart. I don't know what happened with it. It's like the, there's all these pixels appearing and banding and all this. I did something wrong. I must have done something wrong. But it spooked me because I've got, you know, other videos that I'm putting together for my wife's channel. And I was doing the same thing. And now I'm like... What's it going to look like after I actually, you know, render the video? Because the other one looked great before I rendered it. What's this one going to do? It, it, and I thought I'd use the best settings to the same ones that I always do when I rendered it, but somehow it fell apart. Um, part of it, you know, was I recorded on this, not uh, not the camera that's recording me now. And I thought that maybe the 8-bit color in that section anyway had caused it to fall apart. But no, I, I, I seem to recall using log footage with that camera on another occasion and it looked just fine. Was it lighting? Was it, um, you know? So I, I decided to go to the internet and look to see when, you know, is there like a, a time when you should use log and not use log? Yeah. Uh, well, according to them, you should just basically use it uh, whenever you want the best possible quality for your videos, you know? or the most room to do color grading. But that's when it fell apart, when I was trying to do the color stuff, the styling of the video. So I don't know. I can see the benefits, I suppose, if I'm you know, recording in a really dark place and I want to get as much dynamic range as possible. I, I guess it would be the same in a, in a bright place, but what was it that happened to it? I'm still trying to figure this out, and I have been searching, and I have not found anything that is helping with the... Uh, the answers here but that's that's the way that it is you get on youtube and there's all these people that supposedly have answers about you know color grading and editing and stuff it's like they're holding back or some of them are actually giving you stuff uh, that'll that'll mess up your videos and so so be careful what you uh, what you follow when you're doing this stuff but yeah the log stuff so anyway i've gone out now since then and i'm the same thing here i am not using the uh, the log profile I'm not using any picture profile. I'm just recording to see uh, how it's going to look. Uh, and I already know it's going to look great. Even when I start messing with the colors and all of that, it's going to look great. It's going to be clear and sharp and, I mean, where I want it to be sharp. When If I don't want it to be sharp, I can I can change that, you know. Um, other than that, it's just the lens, you know. It's, it's creating the bokeh effect, the slight bokeh effect behind me because I don't have it... Uh, that dialed in but you know all of that is dependent on the hardware but um, all this other stuff I, I don't know I'm gonna have to research that but there's there's other things in the camera right maybe um, maybe you don't have the experience or the time to go in and, and do this like with the log stuff right which I thought I had figured out but apparently I don't um, it has settings on it that I've been messing with too to see what you can get right out of the camera and it, it's, it's interesting, you know? Everybody's looking for that film look. Well, I, I feel like you can probably get it right there in the camera. I can tell you don't believe me about these different modes, but um, to demonstrate what I'm talking about and to prove myself correct, I, I hope, I guess we'll, we'll know after I record this, I have brought you to my living room. And uh, this, as you can see, we are now on the standard mode. At least I think that's what it stands for on the Sony camera here, ST. Let's uh, let's try something different. Ha! Huh. Now I'm in 
VV mode, whatever that is. Uh, does it look more film-like? I don't know, but uh, it looks different, right? The colors look a little bit different. I'm not even gonna do uh, any messing with the colors on this one, just leave it as it is. Straight out of the camera, this is what it looks like. Let, let's try the, one of these other ones here. Ha, huh. NT mode. By the way, I'm, I'm not actually changing anything when I'm reaching up to the camera, that's just for effect. Did it, uh, did it work? I don't know, but um, yes, NT mode. I don't know what these stand for again. I don't know, NT, not too much. Maybe because there's like less saturation now. I don't know. But uh, you can see the colors have changed. Again, I'm not doing anything with it. I'm leaving it as it is. This is just the image you get. And let, let's see what about another one here. Ha! Boy, now something really has changed, hasn't it? This is noticeable. If, even if the other ones weren't that noticeable, which I'm not sure, this one I know because the color's gone. Now this one I know, it's, it's for sepia. I think it was SP that I put it on. But uh, yeah, now I feel like I'm in some, uh, it's like an old fashioned photograph, except there's movement, you know? This is even beyond black and white. This is sepia. There's still a little bit of kind of a brownish color to it. Yeah. Feeling, uh, this is, uh, what, would you, what would you call this exactly? I don't know. I think it's meant for photographs not uh, for video, but you can get this look just by switching the thing. Now now let's, um, again, sorry about the uh, reaching at the camera, but let's try the log stuff and see if we can get it to work properly this time. Ah, and here we are, S log three, and S gamut cine, whatever the heck. Does it look better or, I mean, is it producing the same ridiculous you know, aberrations and things that it had before, the uh, the little pixels and banding, or did it work right this time? I don't know. But yes, this is this is what everybody says you're supposed to film in, the S-log. Um, it certainly does take a lot more time to edit something like this because there's a lot more steps, but um, I don't know, how do I look? Can, is the dynamic range increased? to the point that you actually care? I, I don't know. I can, can you see the shadows? Nobody can hide in those shadows over there now or wherever they are in the room. There's no way any bad guy's hiding in this shot. I, I'm telling you because the shadows are completely visible because of the S-log. Eh, I don't know. It's a work in progress. And I swear that one of these days, I am gonna figure this out. I don't think that it's because I'm not supposed to use the S-log that the thing fell apart. I think it has something to do with my editing process or something along those lines. And there goes an airplane. It's the uh, the flight school that flies around the hill that I live on, that overlooks the city. They just, for whatever reason, they love to fly around and around and around my house. I, uh, yeah, it's always the same little, the green plane flying around. Anyway, I, I hope that that, uh, Showed you. If you have a Sony camera, like an a7 IV, an a7S III, boy, I wish I had one of those. Or even, you know, an a6500, a6700, ZVE, whatever the heck, they have these different profiles. Now on mine, this is probably because I don't know enough about my own camera, in order to switch between those different uh, settings, the, the styles or whatever, the color style, what, what is it even called on there? It's called creative look. I, I just pulled the camera off the thing and looked at it. Creative look. You have to go into the camera mode, the photography mode. I know the whole thing is a camera, but the, the one for taking photographs, not the video part. And select from the creative look menu. You can hit the function button and get into it. How, you probably know about that. If you have one of these cameras, you probably know at least a little bit how to go through the menu. You don't have to go into the big menu. Just hit the function button on the back and go to the creative look and you can choose from a plethora of different creative looks. Or you can go with the S-Log and hopefully have better luck than I do. Or, you know, whatever you wanna do, just right out of the camera. Just uh, just like what I'm doing. Anyway, we will figure this out. Over the time, I, I'm telling you, I will figure this out. And um, eventually I'll get good enough where I might, uh, I might try something real, like a, a black magic cinema camera or something. They're not that much. They're not that much to get. I wouldn't want to get the crop thing, but the, you know, the 6K full frame, 
I've seen images from them. It looks amazing, but then again, so does everything that people show from Sony. I guess the camera I should really be thinking about is the A7S III. Those are amazing cameras, amazing. Uh, similar, I believe, in some ways to the camera that I have, the A7 IV, but um, better in many ways from when it comes to video and that sort of thing. Anyway, I better end of this. Uh, I guess I'll see you guys tomorrow. Bye.